Well, hello! Hello! Hello, my peoples. We started a little early because we wanted to make sure that we have everything the way it's supposed to be. And so once we start... Um, can It's not letting me on to... There it here is. Here we go. Oh, good. It's right side, too. Look at that. Nice. So we started a little early. I should probably turn it down. <laughs> Anyways, I've got my gaming hat on. And I think it's your turn. Is it my turn? Oh, we're playing that. Yeah. So it's my turn. My turn. Oh, can you see that over there? Yeah, you just can't see it because there it says we're telling people that you're live right now. Oh, okay. So we're going to go right there. Man! Oh, connect four! Connect Man! four! I won. He won, and I, I lost. I won. Look at this. <laughs> but, um, so... For those of you who are um, living in climates where you can actually live, like, you know, above 30 degrees, uh, let me re-clarify that. Above zero. Literally. Literally. Um, go out, have fun, but take the phone and watch us. Because um, it is literally zero degrees outside right now. And it feels like negative 12. It's nutty, I'm telling it, you. It's the craziest feeling because we... We got a little bit of snow, but not too much, but it's just excruciatingly, brutally cold outside. So, I am doing to see... Okay. So, anyways, uh, we have our new equipment. We have figured out how to run a Facebook stream live with our new equipment, whoop, whoop, whoop. which is exciting, because I did, we did, we had a sideways view. Yep. But, um, which you can always do in the future, just to let you know, if you lock your screen mm -hmm. and you turn it, then you can watch it like so. Yep, exactly. But, Let's take away those steps, and maybe I should figure out how to do it correctly, right? <laughs> so, we figured out how to do it correctly, and so you should be watching us via um, via this. Wow, we're jumping away, jumping on. Am I on Facebook or Instagram? Uh, you're on Facebook, and I'm on Instagram. Am I? Mm -hmm. I have no viewers. That sounds like us. Oh, because you know why? We're early. What time is it? This doesn't... 630. Exactly, so people will be jumping on now. So, anyways, because I know you ain't, uh, you're, you guys are not outside watching. Oh gosh, no. There's no possible way you can be. That'd be or insane. Or outside doing something. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a game tonight, is there? Oh. I don't know. But I don't think so. I we went to the yesterday. game last night. It was yesterday. We won. Okay. Yeah. We won right, the yeah. first one. The yesterday. Lions won. So, um, we're going to be talking about board games, vintage board games, because when it's this cold outside, especially here in Michigan, what do you do? You stay inside, and if you don't want your kids on their phones, in their rooms, or their tablets, or their Game Ooh, Boys, the Game Boys, what year am I in? Hey, I their, wish. <laughs> their Switch. Their Switch, is that what it is called now? Now that's like the equivalency to a Game Boy is the Nintendo Switch. You totally got a few viewers on my screen. My screen's not showing them. So, anyways, um, but that's okay. I'm using an archaic piece right now. I, you know, dug out one of my old um, tablets that I hadn't gotten rid of. Because I'm and, a slacker. I forgot my pen. You know, my no, tablet. no, no, that's okay. Well, we've got multiple streaming channels, so it's hard to maintain. Anyways, so, oh, no, you're fine. You can watch that one in okay. case there's a... Thank you, Johnny, for, uh, for that, and uh, pop in sometime. Um, so, anyways, we're going to talk about vintage board games and things to do when it's this... Um, I don't even want to say cold because it's beyond cold. Frigid. When there's when it's this frigid, right? Um, do you know when I got in my car yesterday to go to um, on set for caffeinated conversations? Mm -hmm. It was negative. My car actually said negative two. You know when I seen you post that you were there because mm -hmm. I didn't see it uh, yesterday. I seen it this morning. Uh huh. Um, I said, wow, they're all troopers for still. Show must go on. I'm not gonna lie. I thought the coffee shop would have been closed. No, it wasn't. Um, and this week. Next week and the week after will be somewhere else, but um, but no, I mean you know the show must goes on. It's funny because we got there and I literally sat down and said, "Oh, we're better than the post office." <laughs> literally, post office was as quiet as a mouse. So, anyways, I have my gaming hat on and um, people are starting to come on. So we're going to be talking about board games because it's definitely cold here. Yep. yep. And uh, we got some cool facts, and I have Connect Four here, which is one of the original games, right? Yeah. Well, one of the original games we know uh, from the seventies, uh, but not one of the original board games. You know, I never, ever. I never noticed what what is this supposed to symbolize? Has Connect Four always had the symbols on the checkers well, like this? Connect Four is pretty much checkers vertical which would make sense you know but because of the fact that you can't jump them 
then it becomes tic-tac-toe kind of okay yeah so it's a mixture of um checkers and tic-tac-toe okay um checkers being one of the original games ever made which i thought was cool i didn't know that they uh considered that a game then because like obviously i understand that it's a game but like would consider it more like strategy well all all original games started with strategy sure sure you know because the the top three original games which is kind of cool and tell me what you think about this format you guys because we're we're sitting here talking do you like it when we run around and just be silly or do you like it when we sit down and we talk and we show the games that we're talking about yeah and different things because i got some cool ones here look at this lots of cool games the roadrunner game the roadrunner game look at this thing now, you know what I like about the Roadrunner game? What? Wily Coy Coyote. Is you cannot miss the game pieces. You cannot miss the game pieces, right? So these are good for people for older people who have hard eyesight, I apparently. For sure. Or for children, because these game pieces are fantastic. I, I love them. I was curious as to where the coyote is. Yeah. Oh, there's there the coyote is. right there. But, so, I mean, you know what's cool, too? If you're a fan of Looney Tunes, not, yeah, Looney Tunes, then these would be cool just to put on the wall. 100%. Like, you know, or if you're doing your kid's room, maybe a new baby's coming, and you're going to do oh, a Looney Tune. perfect, honestly. How cool would these be sitting up? They're super cute, and they're sturdy. Like You know what? Really I want to see these on the back of a car that yeah. says, my family. <laughs> yeah. Don't you? Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> And I, just the quality of the paper is still in such great condition as well. Yeah, isn't it cool? I wonder how you play the game because I just I looked know. at some of the cards and the cards are just numbered. It does have oh, okay. directions. Most of your old games will have directions on the back. Can I see that one more time? Yes, it says to go. see, to outrace other players and not end up with a Wild E. Coyote. Wild E. Coyote. So these are Warner Brothers. Yeah. 1969. 69. 1969. Look at this. <laughs> These belong on the wall. Here, it, it it's such a, from the basic pieces, this is actually a very intricate game. You know what? <laughs> the, the older the games become, are, the more basic they are. And the like less I, pieces they are. And it's like actually like, uh, it, it's a very high intense game. I'm sitting here reading the uh, instructions and mm -hmm. like, we just have a bunch of Roadrunners, one Coyote. Look at the cards. They're fun and colorful. Numbered cards. Isn't that cool? And paper coins. And oh, paper coins. I, I totally wanted to talk about this on the show today. Fun What's fact, that? you guys. Did you know that Rainbow Stripes is officially being discontinued this year? What's Rainbow Stripes? Oh, the gum that literally, like... I don't chew gum. It had a rainbow when zebra. When you pay a lot of money for caps, you stop chewing gum. <laughs> it has the rainbow zebra on it. And you oh. chew it for five seconds and then the flavor would be gone. That was like the joke of the gum. Oh, well, that's probably why it's no longer. <laughs> <laughs> it has been around for so, so long. So, 1969, they had fabulous games. Yes. You could make a cool... Fan. Fan out of it. So, yeah, paper everything, too. And even if you're even if you're not a fan of playing the games, they're good to have for display purposes. The box itself right? is beautiful. So this is Beep Beep, Outrace, Wiley Coyote. I wonder if he falls off a cliff. Super Spy Connect for this one hilarious? is honestly so cool. ESP. Yeah, that's is that cool what it's one. called? ESP. ESP. So it's Kreskin's ESP, and it's a game of um, being able to guess things, like you know the cards that come up, and you have to what am i holding oh really type thing. it says will the mystery pendulum answer your question about mm -hmm. love yeah. career finance travel so it's pretty much a board game version of the, the eight ball eight ball lol oh, well, it's a board that. game version of the eight ball oh, look at the cards. oh i know and look at the, the here. pendulum sometimes you guys these boards are well not this one but these boards are are the graphics are so cool that they could easily be just framed and put on the wall the pendulum the pendulum oh, dude yeah so it would sit here yep like so so it would sit like so and then the pendulum would so if you were like, yeah. am I going to meet a new friend when I travel to Hawaii? And then you go here, and then you let it answer yes or no. Did you read yes that? Because no? the first one is travel. Really? Yeah. Isn't that hilarious? See? No, I didn't. How travel. creepy the is that? The first one is travel. So how fun. So, I mean, this one has never been used. Look at the mint condition this is in. What kills me about these... What kills me about these is... Um, Oh, Bill, yes, he heard that the um, gum is being discontinued. Did you? Isn't that so yep. crappy? So she's going to sit and play I to just, try to figure out. So what? Tell me. What is your, um, so your travel? I think, I don't know if you're supposed to, like, 
let it go and then it like figures itself out um but it's swinging in, ah! in the yes so I'm dropping. according to this game i'm gonna be traveling sometime soon <laughs> well she drives to ohio all the, the time, time. So, Sweet Pill must be coming in concert. Yeah, actually, they are. That's super ironic. See, so she is traveling. I love that. <laughs> so, um, so board games are fun. They're a great way to bring the kids around the table to play. And trust me, if they sit there... This goes oh, in there. sorry. If they sit there and say, oh, this is going to be boring, this is going to be boring, by the time you're done, it's not boring anymore. you got to pull out this one and then just have them ask you a bunch of crazy questions. Right? <laughs> but then they're hard to get off. So, like... For instance, this game, this Connect Four game, which um, is from the 70s, 100% here, if I can get this off. Yeah, 100% here. It's 10 bucks. Oh, really? For an evening of, of fantasticness. Yeah, right? it is. <laughs> I mean, granted, it goes quick with these ones. But um, but still, oh, you got the baggie for Yep, and we're doing cleanup we're while doing. we work. Yes, we are. But honestly, so, I want to give a couple of kudos points to Jason. He had this fabulous idea for us to talk Jason about Walter, this Jason Walter, store manager. Yeah. And um, I thought it was a fabulous idea. Honestly. It is, especially with how cold it's been outside. And we did a little bit of research, so we're going to have some stuff to tell you here. And then we'll cover Drew Barrymore's face here in a minute. <laughs> yeah. um, Sorry, Drew, you got to go. One of the ones that I thought was interesting was this one here. And she was surprised to see the Family Feud with the board game. Honestly, that's Look so cool. So Family Feud. Who remembers Family Feud? Did it, did right? It, did it. So you you know Drew Carey as the host of Family Feud, right? Well, he is the new host of Family Feud. Okay. There used to be an older host, and I couldn't tell you. If somebody remembers the name of so the host of Family Steve Feud. Harvey. Steve Harvey, or I meant Steve Harvey, and Dana Carvey, and then there was somebody else. Okay, okay. He did two by two, he did a bunch of them. So, um, <laughs> back in the 1970s and 80s, it was very popular for um, TV shows, not just game shows, but um, sitcoms as well, mm -hmm. to put out uh, board games. Because today, if you want to go, tell me your favorite TV show. Seinfeld. Seinfeld, no, one that's current. Oh, um... Murders in the Building. Okay, Murders in the Building, right? So you would think that'd make a great board game, It right? would, honestly. Well, there is probably a app sure. that you can go in and find different ways of playing the games and doing stuff like that. Um, back then, they didn't have those. Right. There was no apps. There was no way of, of obtaining any other money than through advertisement on TV. Um, and then if you were a... If you were lucky enough to have um, iconic characters, you might have some dolls. You might have some Plush. stuff like that. So a great way during the 70s, somebody went ding, ding, and said, why don't we do a board game for every sitcom and every game show ever produced <laughs> through, um, you know, uh, on TV. So you can, so hence the Family Feud came out. And there's some other ones in here you'll see. Mighty Mouse, um, the, Ra the California Raisins, um, of course, the... Twenty thousand dollar pyramid. That is honestly amazing. Isn't that crazy? I love it because um, Paul Lind, Richard Dawson. Yes, thank you, Richard Dawson. That's who I. Paul Lind was was. Um, oh, who did he do? Not who. What did he do? <laughs> so, um, Richard Dawson. Have you ever seen Total Recall? Yes. The the original. Maybe. Um, with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Richard Dawson, was that Total Recall he was in? He was in one of them. No, he was in The Running Man. Did you ever see The Running Man? I don't think so. With Okay, so it's a, it came out the same time frame. Okay. And Richard Dawson was the talk show host guru. Okay. He was on uh, uh, Family Feud. He was on a bunch of other ones. But he was also an actor, and he starred in Running Man. Okay. And he was the game show host in Running Man. Okay. So I thought it was he, cool. He's kind of like playing a double life. Yes, then, he was cause... evil in Running Man. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, and he also, and one of his big things was, um, he kissed every female character, every female person. I understand. I know exactly who you're talking about now. Yeah. So I'm explaining to, a, how old are you? 24. 24 year old about a show that was, that came on in the 70s before she was even born. Was he also on this show as he well? He could have been. He could have done some of those. Is this where like the pyramid is up and then, uh, I'm pretty Hogan's sure. Heroes. I don't know if you've watched it. Your parents probably watch it. Watched it. I think I know exactly who you're talking about, mm. but I think I just remember them saying that he used to. Thank you, Pat. He used to kiss everybody when he was a host. Yeah. On this oh show. yeah, and it was creepy. Yeah, because some of those girls were girls. Well, not just that. 
but I mean, he would kiss them on the lips. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. And you know, it was a seventies, like you know, and and they kiss. What, what are they supposed to do? Right, right. So, but anyways, Family Feud then became you know, it's still going strong today. It is. Now I'm going to tell you, twenty thousand dollar pyramid. Paul Lind, I think Paul Lind was. Um, Okay, I might say her name wrong, and so somebody correct me on here. Um, uh, Golden Girls. Betty White. Betty White was married to the game show host, King. And they owned, I know they owned $20,000 Pyramid. Really? But, um, and a couple of other ones, but uh, I'm not 100% sure what her, I think it might, it might have been Paul Lind. Anyways, her husband, that's where most of her fortune came from. Okay. Was game shows. Her husband was Game Show King. That's Love why that. she appeared on all of them in the 70s. Oh, that would honestly make so much sense. Yeah. So Family Feud is fun to play. And if you are a big fan, it's pretty cool. Because it was it was major technology back in the day. So it does it just like that. And then here are your different... Um, isn't that hilarious? I love it. You've got your, mon your Monopoly money. And this one is much more... As you can see, all the little pieces that are in there. Isn't that crazy? Alan London. Thank you, Johnny. Alan, Lund Alan um, London was uh, Betty White's husband. And if you Google Alan London, you'll see that he was the game show guru. Yeah. And that they, a lot of their fortune and life was spent with game shows. Um, but it's pretty cool. So a lot of famous people came from game shows back then. This is such ahead of its time that, like, it I was. Like, I wonder, let's see what you You have to, like, out. actually take it apart and latch it. But as you can see here, this is the scoreboard mm -hmm. for Family Feud. But what's cool about it is, is that once you actually put it together and you spin this, it literally will give you hmm. the answers for the next question. So what's funny is, I was born in 1970. Mm -hmm. I'm 53 years old. I was six years old when this came out. This came out in 1977. You weren't even thought of yet. Nope. Actually, your parents... They were born of 57. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your parents were in their 20s. Yeah. So, um, it's funny. 1977. And it's still going strong today. Look how clean the paper Oh, is. I know. People actually took care of things back then. Isn't that crazy? You know? Well, they didn't know if they were going to have the um, funds to, the be funds to, to buy anymore. another one. That maybe, you know, the biggest store was 100 miles away or 50 miles away. So, they didn't know when they were going to be able to get up there again, right? So, Family Feud. So, these are great games to play. Now, we did play this. We were playing this when you came in. Yes! Uh, <laughs> yes, he did own the Game Word Show passion, uh, Password. And Password is still going strong today. So, um, yeah, it was a huge game show. And you had to guess the password. Oh. So, um, and $20,000 Pyramid, I know he owned. He owned a bunch of them. But, um... So, Operation, this is a 1997 version of Operation, mm -hmm. and we had it out, and we had the batteries in it, and I'm going to tell you guys, it's like, um, <laughs> it doesn't take as many as a boom, 80s boombox. But they need giant ones. But you need D batteries, D-sized batteries, uh, for your, um, for your game, but it is pretty cool, because it is just like the old games, isn't Yeah. It? So, you know, look at that. And here's all the little pieces. Now, you said they remade it in 2004. And four. And four. Look at the little pieces. So, John Spinello created Operation in 1962 at the University of Illinois as a sophomore college class project. Was he a medical? Um, it didn't say that he was, but it did say that he was interested in medical. Interested in medical? Um, he later then sold the patent for the game to an investor firm, which is unnamed, to only $500 and a promise that he could have a job at that company. Oh, wow. And uh, you're probably always wondering, like me, you always wonder silly things, like, what is his name? Well, he actually has one, and it's Cavity Sam. And he's had that name since day one, and they never changed it. Cavity Sam. It says right here, two D-size alkaline batteries, yeah, required, not included. One or more players. I don't know if I could sit and just play. Do you remember Ice Break? Yes. I used to sit and play Ice Break by myself. I honestly have that, a <laughs> recap version of that game. 
Um, mm-hmm. Some other really cool things about Operation is that yeah. its original name was called Death Valley. And Death Valley. Death Valley. And the whole point of the game was is, is you know how in Operation you take the tweezers and you're supposed to extract the specific things that are in Cavity Sam. Mm-hmm. Well, in Death Valley, it was filled with water and you were supposed to use a needleless syringe to suck up the water and put, a, put it in a reservoir. But if you dropped it, it would buzz and go bzzz and the whole thing would shake and was light Was it up. a real noodle, needle? No, it was needleless. Oh, I was going to say. So it it like, buzzes and everybody sticks themselves. Like you got to like squeeze <laughs> it up and put it in the reservoir. Oh, so it's like a little, yeah. Yep, and the whole box was desert themed, including the little dropper that you had as well. I wonder if some of those are out in the market. Possibly. There's there's something, you guys, you collectors. If you're looking for something, find, what was it called? Death Valley. Death Valley, which is the original operations game. Yep, and it was made by John Spinello, so I'm not sure if he has any, like, specific tags or... Ooh, I'm going to find out, because I think <laughs> it's kind of cool, because, you know, things morph. Yeah. You know, they start out one way, and they end up a completely different way, but, mm-hmm. you know, it started with a thought. So Death Valley, finding the original would be kind of cool. It would be sick, because, like I said, the whole box is different. It's it's desert-themed. The color scheme is completely different. This is all primary colors. Um, Death Valley is, like, brown, dark yeah. green, gray, things Just like that. Just probably all desert. Desert colors, right? yeah. Right. And in, in 2004, Sam did get a new diagnosis, and he did come in with a large laundry list of complaints, but the only thing that they seemed to really care about was his brain freeze, and that happened in 2004, and it actually beat out the symptoms of a growling stomach and tennis elbow. They only got 54% of the votes. And um, lastly, Surgeon Andrew Goldstone was a huge fan of Operation, and when he got older, he legitimately took it to heart, and he noticed during surgery that when you get too close close to a nerve that could cause haphazard with paralyzation or just complications down the road. So he legitimately took the thought of, of when you get too close to something, mm-hmm. it buzzes and makes noise so you don't get too close to a nerve. You know, it's funny. And when was this? Uh, that was patented in 1994. Ni- that part was? Yes. Oh, okay. Because it's funny because we have a drinking game up there. Yes. That is very similar to this. And it was made in the 1970s and would sit in bars and you would have to, it's too heavy to bring up. I was going to see the name of, I think it's called Boozometer. Boozometer. And you would have to see, depending on how drunk you are, you move it around and it buzzes. You know, and, if it doesn't. And what's even funnier is that that handle of the game he's talking about is literally like a screwdriver uh-huh. with a handle, and like the tip is bent over, so you really got to be steady because get, the hole's like this big. I'm gonna tell you, I tried that sober, and I got two <laughs> inches, not even a an inch. Remember that? And so maybe you have to be drunk in order for it to work. To work, great. Right. <laughs> so um, these are some of the games that she picked that she's gonna tell us about. So guess who is one of them, right? Yeah. Before we get to the main one, it so, is. When is Guess Who from? Guess Who was actually made in... The first production was 1979. Okay, I gotta tell you, I love it. The Mystery Face Game. The Mystery Face Game. Can you believe that? Go ahead. This was actually um, a a completely different style of box uh, because as you can see here, this does have Spanish on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And this is just like a rare addition to this game because not that having Spanish on a board game is different, but it's very rare where you'll ever see a board game that's English and in Spanish or like English and in German as well. Because if you read everything, you see how it repeats itself just in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And they didn't start doing that until the, after a first couple of pops when people were making very relative complaints. I remember this game. Yeah. This, you have to match the faces, right? Do you have to match? Oh no, maybe I don't. I thought it was like like a match game. And so, your magic person, you pick one of these right here. And so, like, let's just say, I know you guys have to remember this. This is such a really cool game, and in real life, it only takes about three minutes to play. So, like, this is your special person, okay? I have to guess who your special person is, and you're supposed to guess who mine is on my card, which is Charles. Okay, so then I would take Charles and drop him down. It, well, you don't know I have Charles, and I don't know you have Tom. You're supposed to say, is your special person a boy or a girl? And then what, you knock it down when if they, if it's not that right person? If it, Yes, exactly. Or, like, is your person bald? And I say no. Then I knock down All the bald everybody people. who's bald. Oh. And the whole point of the game is you want to race and guess this person before the other person. Is your person have too much makeup on? No. <laughs> 
I'm looking at this lady right here. Yep, that's what I was looking at too. <laughs> And honestly, this game is really cool amongst all board 1996, games. 1996, Milton Bradley. Yeah. And right. the faces are really cool. Look at that. They're very different, too. Yeah. And this game in itself, its history is, is really interesting just because the, the owners and the makers of this game, not Milton Bradley, they cared, but they didn't care. And what I mean by that is, is Aura and Theo Coaster, they were brother and sister, they were pro-game investors in Israel, like that was their actual career. They, made in the USA. This is made 1987 to 1996. Oh, dang. So this came out. Okay, yeah. So that touches back to yeah. like how everyone looks very different as to the very first repop in 1979. But back to what I was saying is is that they own an actual company called Theora Designs, and they oh. sell pop culture and video games, and they're still very, um, very active today. Uh the first person to ever successfully win a game of Guess Who, because there is a right way to win this game, oh. um, which is to guess the special card before your opponent does. Hmm. And that was Mahia Nika in 2016. I want to know who did the art on the people. They're fantastic. <laughs> Honestly, it is really beautiful. And in 1980, so a year after the first production, um, there was a total of 20-ish names, and they're different. So if you look on here and look at the names that I'm going to list off, they're completely different. You got Alex, Alfred, Anita, Anne, Bernard, Bill, Charles, Claire, David, Eric, Frank, George, Herman, Joe, Maria, Max, and Paul, Peter, Philip, Richard, Robert, Sam, Susan, and Tom. All of those changed every couple of years just to keep the game interesting and fresh. And also everybody on the board games every couple of years will also look different as so well. So it's kind of an elimination game. Yeah, literally. That's so what it is. It's, that's a fun one. So only two people can play that game. Yep, only two people can play. I only got two more facts about this game. Um, a six-year-old girl was playing with a couple of her school girlfriends, and mm -hmm. she was really perplexed at the fact that there was only six women and 19 men. So when she came home from preschool, she asked her mom to send Hasbro an email, which her mother really did, mm -hmm. and it caused such an uproar that they didn't even email her back, but they sure went to the news and told them about it. Of course. Um, 20 new people have been added to the game since the very first time it's been added, and in 1990. Or 1989, guess who won the Arts Spill Best Children's Game in the world? Who? Guess who? Oh, guess. <laughs> I'm like, who? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you've got another one we're going to talk about. Yes. Um, however, before we do that, let's talk about a did you know kind of thing. Yeah. And did you know that the very first, the very, I'm going to go through, I went through and I looked up to see what some of the first board games ever were, right? And some of them I've never heard of. But some of them I have. And the very first one, which was found in the first dynasty burials of Egypt, and we're talking about 3500 3, B.C. to 3100 B.C., because B.C. you go down. Before Christ. Yeah, but you go down. In right, numbers, right, right. Whereas after you go up. So in 35 to 31 B.C., um, Senate, S-E-N-E-T, which is a very similar game to Cribbage. Okay, not used with cards. It's called Senate. Very similar to Cribbage. Um, and it still is today. We've had it. I currently don't have it. I thought I did. But and it's you small, can still isn't it? buy it today. It's very small. It's a small game. It's small. But it's been loved and adored all the way back through Egyptian times. So, okay, hold on. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Is Cribbage and. Cribbage is not. It's similar to Cribbage, but not using cards. So. Is this what you're talking about? Like the pins that you put in it, they kind of come up like a like a T that you put a golf ball on. No, that's this. That okay. Yeah, that's cribbage. This one used little figures okay. that would sit inside the spots, okay. and they would it would be done with hieroglyphics, oh. so some sort of a writing method. Sure. And I guess it's questions and answers, maybe. Okay. And it would move you forward. That would make sense. And you would get um, different level of playing. Things. So sure. if you pass the first round, you get a bigger playing thing and so forth until you have the largest. Okay. But what got me was the the number uh, number two was checkers. Wow. And checkers 3000 BCE. But it is a very archaic game if no, you for think sure. about it. Because kind of like Connect Four, it's literally a board and you jump over pieces, right? Vertical checkers. 
I never looked at Connect Four oh, as my burn game hat, checkers. People. So wait, like I, so my game hat. Is it the same way that we play Connect Four? The same way we play checkers? Then? Kind of, but like I said, because you can't jump. And yes. take. Okay. They kind of added in tic tac toe, so now you have four in a row. So therefore, you take it. Take it. Sure. Does that make sense? Yep. So my dad always used to get so frustrated because I would just not get chess or checkers. Like I would well, try. I'm about to talk to you about chess. Okay, I'm down to listen. So chess <laughs> is the number eight. Um, it was 600 A.D. after death. Surprising, I thought oh. it would have been before, yeah. but it is a game of strategy. And um, in 600 AD, and we have all these fantastic chess sets. <laughs> Where did this you get Na that from? This one is Napoleon Bonaparte. So, and what's great about it is it is, wow. and I got to show you, some of these chess pieces are fantastic. You They're guys. like real people. So, who watches the, the Queen's Gambit, right? Now, who's chess fans? The Queen's Gambit? Nobody. I've, I've got crickets going on over here. <laughs> so... A little FYI, if you have a chess board and you have a Connect Four, you have checkers. Checkers and checkers and chess use the same board. Same board, yeah. They use the exact same board. So a lot of times when you buy a checkered, uh, chess set, it will sometimes they will have checkers in it so that you can alternate. Also do both. And these are great for um, for a lot of different things for uh, teaching children um, strategies. Yeah. Uh, counting patience patience um and when i say count time time because a lot of these are timed timed you know but if you look at these chess pieces look at those this N is who do you have who is that i think i picked up napoleon nope this is napoleon here so the king and queen is napoleon and his queen so here is napoleon okay yep Right. Yep, and this is super cool stuff Isn't this here cool? because it even gives you this little booklet that even gives information like Napoleon was born in a JCO Corsia on August fifteenth, nineteen sixty. Yaya knows how to play. Probably. Do you have a Yaya? Yeah. Okay, it's your. I think your mom. My grandma. Are you well? Just say Debbie. Debbie. It's my grandma. Okay, Yaya knows how to play. Okay, you're going to have to teach me because I don't know. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is I have a board over here for people who don't know. It teaches you how to play. Oh, no way, really? Yes, because it has a written on the board how to move them. Okay. So we do, there are chess boards, and trust me, once you learn how to play chess, you'll never forget. Right. Now, this one has, of course, the black. Oh, my gosh, that's black, so cool. Because it is just like checkers, other than, it can be two different colors of any kind. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then you have that one, and then you have the white set, so that, wow. look at this, isn't that fantastic? It's beautiful, look at the queen. Isn't it? And what's funny is, this is made out of a hard plastic, so it's not, a, uh, it's not expensive. I thought it was ivory, honestly. Yeah. Oh, well, we wouldn't be able to sell it then. Oh, yeah, that's but, true. But, um, it is, it's not that expensive, it's a great set, I mean, just even setting out, it's beautiful. Can I see it? Yeah. I'm going to bring them a little bit closer. Absolutely. Go ahead. Here, take Napoleon, too. Yeah, because, like, uh, the quality of these Napoleon. are are genuinely just insane. I will show you in one second Instagram. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Look at the quality. It's, it's genuinely insane. Like, this would make me a little bit more interested in wanting to get one of the chess or checkers just because of the quality of these. Got seven on right now. Mm-hmm. Seems low, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Maybe. Are, are board games not fun enough? Or are we not running around and, right. and being silly? Yeah. My hat's not silly enough for you. <laughs> so anyways, but I, I had to show you because ch I like chess. I learned how to play chess young. You know, growing up, I learned how to play chess in Hawaii. And when I lived in Hawaii. Um, Must have been fun. Um, not as a kid. I mean, it was fun, but it, I went, there's a lot of issues with Hawaii when you're little. And so, um, but there was a lot of alone time I had because um, I was a young white kid from uh, mainland and they, two things they hate are mainland people and um, you're not Hawaiian, Samoan, or Japanese. Yep. Oh. Oh, yes. All right, so checkers and chess. Um, 
one of the the number two oldest game is backgammon, and that was played in Greece. Backgammon. Backgammon, and I thought I had one, but I don't have one, so I'll have to show you another time. Go ahead. This is a 1995 version of Jumanji. Stalking lions, charging rhinos, lunging, snapping crocodiles, and more. In the wild world of Jumanji, they're only a dice roll away. Choose your pawn and set out on a deadly journey. Decode rhyming card messages that could spell disaster. Roll eight-sided dice together to rescue a fellow tiger in danger. Fellow to escape the jungle and it could swallow you whole. Did you guys know that the fun fact of this game is that the players, if you do intend to play it you are intended to finish the game in its entirety or else you were destined to have bad luck whenever you voyage saw the movie <laughs> <laughs> saw both the movies so let's talk about that a little bit so board games movies tv stuff like that we talked about tv shows and how they advertise with them so let's flip that shall we and i'm saying that because a lot of people think jumanji was a board game first first and it was not. The movie came out first in 1995, right? Is there a different version? Is the first version with or without um, Robin Williams? The first version is with Robin Williams. Okay. And I believe it was 95 or 96 mm -hmm. it came out. My favorite part of that movie is when the animals were chasing B.B. Wernu with down the street. And her arms were... <laughs> Yeah. Arms going like, Ew. so um, there are you know most of the board games come from movies and TV shows. Um, this was a movie first, and then became a board game, which is a very popular board game. And I believe that the video game is actually even more popular because they based the movie off the video video game. game yep. So um, then there are, uh, but go ahead, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh no, you can keep going. Okay. I'm just gonna flash while you're. So talking. then there are movies that were built from board games. And when I say that, you're like, what? No, the movie would have to come first. And that's not true because there are a few movies, and I wish I had one here Oops. for you, but we sold it. The Ouija board. Oh, yes. Which is a game. I should have brought mine in. Okay, so the Ouija board, which we sold, is a game. All right? It's meant to be a game. It was built by Milton Bradley to be a game. Whoa. We, of course, use it differently. This is a Isn't giant... It? I know. Look at this board. This is Jumanji's board, you guys. Holy crap. Look at this. So, how cool is that? For a game room? Dude, this. This. Look at the graphics. Yeah. Like, And you're supposed to put this in the middle. Right. Bam. So, it looks like that. Yeah. So, it's pretty... kind of resembles Candyland in the middle. Yeah, it sure does. And mm. then this says, In the jungle, you must stay until disaster rolls yep. away. So, I love Jumanji. I love the game, and I love the movies. So, um, you know what? I didn't grab it, and I do have it over there. Clue. Oh, really? We have Clue? We have Clue, too. And so, um, Ouija board, the movie Ouija, was based off the board. Um, Wishmaster was also based off from the Ouija board. And then uh, we, the whole string of horror films of Ouija was all bat based off the, 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 the game. I never, and I'm going to be so serious, I didn't genuinely think that people used to play with Ouija boards, like, for fun. Like, I, yeah, I genuinely yeah. thought that... Well, they, Ouija, Ouija boards have always had that stigma of, um, or not stigma, that that part where, you know, um, you're going to... You're going to talk to the other side, right. and you could you could summon a demon. You could do something to that effect. Um, it was made. The Ouija board was made as fun and to scare yourself because right. we can scare ourselves better than anybody can scare us. One hundred percent. So our mind. It was a mind. It was like a, a mind trick. A game. mind trick game. Sure. Um, like and, I'm not moving it. You're moving it. Right. Right. When in technicality, we are moving it. What'd you see? Oh my, you guys, show, this is like, uh, this is like out of its world. I gotta, I'm gonna bring it to the screen. So while Jason was talking, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna like flip through the Jumanji cards, you know. Doesn't look like anything's there, right? Well, bam, now you can read it. Isn't that crazy? Obviously, this is so basic, but my mind is just blown because... Who it's whatever, basic. It is, but who would ever No, think because that, it's so basic. Yes, and in, yeah. in 95, I genuinely didn't think that they would have the thought process to mm -hmm. like put some scrambled blue words behind here, and you got to use this little... We were smart back then, too. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't think that anybody was going to take time to make games. Like, I genuinely thought all games would be, like, a couple of pieces, the, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like, some the of them can be pretty, pretty... I mean, 
if you go back and you look at some of the war games from back in the day, it's um, look. I they guess they can be pretty like war games. The, the the game war games. Look, I guess like basic isn't the word I want to use because that's like kind of negative. I guess I should no, say like it's basics, sim- right? Archaic. Or basic. like yeah, like simple, like clean, like I would say simple is worse than archaic. Really? Yeah, because simple makes you seem small. Okay, I see that. Whereas archaic and... And um, I mean, like, this is, like, I, I kind of thought that, like, parents back then would be like, okay, they, they genuinely just wanted their kids to have, like, ten pieces in their game, not, like, 50. Well, they did, because they had to clean it up. Clean it, exactly. <laughs> you know. But, um, and we're talking about movies based off board games, and um, we talked about Clue, mm-hmm. my favorite movie in the whole world, one of my favorite movies, Clue, with uh, Tim... Uh, it's a good one. Yeah, and everybody else. Um, that was based solely off the board game. Do you like the original better than the the reprise version? They haven't done a reprise version of it. Yeah. What, what? I swore, we'll talk about it after the show. I swore they have had a new... No, I don't think they have. I think they're in the process of making it. Did they come up with a new Clue movie? Or viewers, let me know. I think they're they're in the process of kind of doing one. It got lost, it said. Did it? So it never came out. Ryan Reynolds wanted to restart. She, a new he did. One. Yeah, he was going to be the. Um, it the, says it got lost within like. Okay. Like him doing. So something. it would be great to have one. Yeah. Well, Knives Out is very similar. Okay, then maybe that's like what I'm yeah. kind of thinking, and like Glass Onion and stuff. Like yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I like that's that. all very similar. Okay. Um, Clue was based solely off the board game. There yeah, was I love no that. movie. There was no nothing. The board game was based off of Agatha Christie books you know colonel mustard did it in the the solarium with the lead pipe now do you think that production companies at the time were releasing board games based on movies and tv shows for the sole purpose of making that franchise more popular or because they wanted to make board games more popular um i think that it it started out as uh, making the show more popular, the movie more popular, and then in turn the board game craze of the 70s and 80s hit. Just hit, so and so okay. therefore it became a two-way street. Sure. We're making both popular. But you had board games that came out like the um, Charlie's Angels board game that came out in the 70s. That's They stopped making that in the 80s. Right. So that was purely for the show. Right. You know, and as the stars... Um, Fame grew, the board games dissipated a little bit. Sure. Because they were making enough money off of their advertising and stuff like that. Because honestly, now I'm thinking about it, um, there was a fun fact about Operation. They have like Toy Story and Shrek Operation. Yeah. That you can get Oh, yeah. Um, Monopoly, which was originally um, brought out, and we've got Monopoly over there. Monopoly, which was originally brought out in 1935. Wow. Um, it didn't gain any huge popularity until the 80s. It was the number one game in the 80s until Trivial Pursuit kicked it out. Now, did you happen to find anything about why they use the specific... We could do an entire show on Monopoly. On Monopoly? We totally should, because I didn't know that it was that... It is. There's a lot of hidden I... worlds about Monopoly. Monopoly is also the only company that franchises out their name. So you can get a St. Clair Shores Monopoly. You can get an I Love Lucy Monopoly. Oh, that you makes so uh, much uh, sense. So technically, you could contact Monopoly and say, I want to make yes. a Monopoly-themed... Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We actually at Christmas had the St. Clair Shores Monopoly. I know because I seen it and I, I swore it was like a fever dream. That's why I was oh, sitting yeah. thinking, what is that? Yeah. Is that real? Okay, so did you happen to find while you were researching, and if you didn't, then we'll for sure just have to add this into another show, uh-huh. uh, why they chose like the thimble and the dough no, and the yacht? Um, I know that a few of those represented like... What was the show the called? The thimble the- was... Um, well, no, I read a lot of this. The show, um, the games that made us, the toys that made us... Okay. Um, they did one on Monopoly, and I know that like the thimble represented sewing, so women. The, the oh. car represented this and okay. represented that. Not gonna lie, I totally didn't even think about yeah, it. Yeah, there way. were different representations of it. The family was the dog sure. or the car or that the. That makes boot, so much sense. I didn't think about like it that, that way. But um, they changed them over the years. Yeah. And for a game like Monopoly, because the number one game through the '60s was Life. Okay. It was Life. Life magazine helped with the creation of Life, and Life became the Life game where you could, you know, are you going to college? You just you... made my mind explode. Yeah. The font is the same. Yeah, it's the, the, the magazine. Put it out. <laughs> Original. So, um, 
you know, Monopoly, for a game to start in 1935 and gain full popularity 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 50 years later, um, and then only to live for about five years to get its butt kicked out of number one spot again because of Trivial Pursuit. Um, it's Trivial it's hilarious. Pursuit. I don't think I've ever played it. Yeah, MSU Monopoly. Absolutely. Oh, they have an MSU Monopoly? That's so Oh, they have cool. everything. You can get an MSU Monopoly. You can get a, a University of Michigan Monopoly. There, um, I remember when I went to school in California that they had University of California Monopoly. They had... Um, they had San Jose State Monopoly. No way. They had um, oh yeah, they even had my local Palmer Palmer College. They had the Palmer College Monopoly set. That's amazing. So you can get a Monopoly set made of anything. Dang, they're making so much money off of that. Oh, they are absolutely. <laughs> but when you have a city that comes in and says, "I want some monopolies for my city," you know, and they put out St. Clair Shores Monopoly. That's something to pass down. No, for sure. Because they're not going to make a billion. They're not, and that's. So true, so true. So it's craziness. So um, another one that they built a movie off from that she did not, she has not seen and did not was not aware that Rihanna starred in this movie <laughs> was Battleship. David, you hear that? Did you hear that Rihanna, your favorite, is in a movie? Because I didn't Rihanna's know that. Rihanna's in more than one movie. I didn't know that. So this is Talking Battleship. So this came along a couple of years after the standard Battleship that we know. Um, because the battleship that we know, there was no talking other than the people. You can even put on solo play and play your, against yourself? Yeah. So, um, in, I want to say, I can't remember, 2005, you can look, I don't remember when the movie came out, Battleship. Um, she's got a watch That's phone, so she can do it while we're on air. Come out. So, Battleship was released on the 18th of May, 2012. 2012. And it starred Rihanna and a bunch of other people. Um, I loved it. It got panned because it was it's a big action film and it sure. all took place in the ocean. Of course. Duh. And um but I thought it was cool. But it's another movie based solely off the video off the game. So we do covet our cultural games so much that we create an entire world around them. Literally. So between Clue and Talking Battleship or in Battleship um, there's probably been a few more Ouija board because of the popularity of it. And then there was a few other ones in there that I'd never heard of that started as board games, but. And I, I think it's so silly how every time when you pull something out and I see something as silly as solo play, like you can just uh -huh. play against the computer. Mm -hmm. I like, again, like I'm just like mind boggled because things now they want you to have to play with another person. Like nothing's like solo play. Like. You have to have another person to play. That's when this came out. Give me the first number. Nine. Two. Ninety-two. Nineteen ninety. Oh, really? Yes. So this is where it started with the the analog computers. <laughs> Let me see. The front. Oh yeah. Nineteen ninety. And it's all lights and games. So there's no real computer chips in there. It's all lights and games. It's kind of like Pong. Battery cover lift open. Yep. It's kind of like Pong. What? Oh, there's batteries in it. We'll have to pull those out. Pull those out. Okay, okay. It was probably, he probably put it in there so that... To test it? To test it, yeah. I'm not. I'm going to allow Steve to do that. Okay. So we try to keep the batteries out of everything, you guys, because we don't want them to... Oh! Oh! I have it! Oh, let me go get it. What is it? Mousetrap. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I forgot it over there with the Barbie game. This Barbie game, honestly, you guys, is so cool. And I blame David because he made me watch the Barbie movie uh, like two weeks ago and I cried for like three hours. I cried the whole movie. All right. So it's board game night. Oh, I'm falling. I, and I got him out, too. Look at that. I was falling. You almost got to see me fall, you guys. So, isn't this table fantastic? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's by Lane. We just got it. It's actually going to be... It's not even priced yet, you guys. Um, but it's probably, I'm going to say, maybe 1960s. Um, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, although I haven't seen you on here. I was going to say, I haven't seen him on. I know. Nor have I seen my mom on here. So, if either of you two are on here, please say hi. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to be sad. And on Facebook as well. So, Mousetrap... 
So I used to love Mousetrap. Now, I wanted to be an architect, right? And really? And create things. Yeah, I actually went to school. And so um, I wanted to be an architect. And um, so I love to build things. You know, and I used to love Mousetrap. Mousetrap, and I consider anything where a ball goes down and it goes all these different places and it's does all these different things. Oh, Steve's here. I'm always watching. Look at him. <laughs> I love it. So, um, Mousetrap. I love Mousetrap. And it's a game that will drive you insane. I'm just laughing at the... What? The sticker here. That somebody Manifest wrote on? Manifest line, lot mm -hmm. number. Oh, from where it was bought, probably. Yeah, yeah. So, Mousetrap, I'm going to tell you, Mousetrap goes all the way back to the 50s. Really? Oh, yeah. But um, the, the, this one's probably from the 70s, 80s, and Mousetrap can be extremely elaborate. You can buy some Mousetrap games that will take you a day to set up. Have you ever been on the ride? Mo yeah, Mousetrap. But I'm going to tell you, it's craziness. I, I love, love how everything's primary color. And look, you know? look at the mouse. Look at the mouse. mouse. There are all these little primary <laughs> mouses, right? So, it takes skill to set this up. It does. I'm not going to pull the whole thing out. No, it takes skill to set it up. Um, it, the first, second time you try and set it up, it's not going to be easy. No. Once you figure out how to set it up, it goes good. It is so much fun to watch because the little balls and the little mice the little go. They start that... moving around and doing all sorts of craziness. Um, yes, it's Mousetrap, David. Did you just get on? I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, dude, come on now. <laughs> It's taking forever to load on my phone, so I can't see um, Facebook, but Instagram's kind of slow right now. Um, so, Mousetrap's good. Now, tell me, this one is relatively new. It's probably the thousands. We girls can do anything. Which, David, you know me, this is such a really cool, cool game. And Barbie's all the rage. Yeah, and I just genuinely, again, I've, that's like my favorite word for today, because I genuinely feel about this game that this is such a cool game for young kids regardless mm -hmm. of gender because it it asks them real questions the cards all have real careers on them um mm -hmm. there's a timer on here you get a game board a spinner six barbie pieces you get four piece bases and 30 career discs and that cool so it's yeah. not the original barbie then because the original barbie had no talent that's very true <laughs> yep, stereotypical barbie had no talent no talent at all and that's what the whole issue was. So, um, but anyway, so we have those. Now, the Barbie and the Mousetrap are on our way, are on, um, I believe, either the, our website, or it's in the thousands, isn't it? 91. Oh, it's 1991. Oh, so it's older. Mm -hmm. Right there. And uh, there might be some information that you might be able to decipher that 1991. I don't know so this, it, I was 21, 20 years old when this came out. So this is 30 years old. Isn't it? It's you're... never been opened. Open. It's new old stock. It's literally in the plastic. And I'm going to tell you. So that made me excited because I couldn't find the, the date for that right off the bat. And um, so I'm glad you found that because this... The 80s is when Barbie became mass marketed, and so you see a lot of the the, the holiday Barbies and the the all of Birthday these, Barbies. which we have a ton of and don't need anymore. Um, but it's still vintage, and the kids today that grew up in the 90s that were young, this is what they wanted. Like, if any of our viewers remember that when Barbie looked like this, like this specific face, they had a whole bed line. And I don't know if my mom's watching, but if my grandma still is, my whole bedroom was old school Barbie, just like this. And it had like pink roses all over everything. And this pattern that's in the background too. That was like mm -hmm. Barbie's like signature. That was it's all over 80s. everything. Yeah. yeah. So earring Ken should be on there. Oh my God! Yeah, he was. The <laughs> I loved him in the movie. Me too. Um, it's and funny, Daddy Ken. Because Debbie, the barrels of monkey. I don't currently have it, but we do carry it, and that's hilarious. Because uh, Debbie, that reminds me of uh, pickup sticks. Remember those? Do you? So um, pickup sticks, barrel of monkeys. Those were things that your that list literally. Your mom would come in and say, "Stop your." Playing and drop them on the floor and say, <laughs> pick them up. up. 52 pick up. My mom would be like, Here, I got something new, new for to do for 20 minutes and then mm. throw a deck of cards in the air. So, Barrel of Monkeys and Pickup Sticks, which I didn't mind, disappeared from my house because <laughs> I. 
because <laughs> it would drive me nuts. Got trust pieces me. everywhere. So the number one, the number one board game, which I wish I had this. We sold it. it the number one board game in nineteen uh, seventies was Mystery Date. So I'm so confuzzled as to like what was the premise of. So the I wish I had one to um, to show you, but uh, Mystery Date Oops. was. Um, it was almost like uh, the dating game. Have you ever seen it? Or like you... speed dating? No, kind of, yeah. But in a game version? But I'm going to tell you it's an expensive game to find. Really? Especially if you find it new old stock or sealed. Mystery game. There's a few games that are going to bring lots What's of money. Mystery date? Mystery date. Uh, mystery date is a very hard game to find. And when you do find it, it's usually extremely expensive if it is intact. Right. Um, and that was 1970s, but Connect Four. Voila! Voila! Was one of the most popular games in the 70s, was Connect Four. Um, in the 80s, Monopoly became the number one game, and then Trivial Pursuit kicked it out, but Fashion Mall. Did we pull that up? That's the doll game. We oh, needed that's the, the board big, game. yeah, okay, gotcha. So, Fashion Mall is um, a big game, and we've had it. Again, pulls stupid money, because the girls who had it back then, they love it. Or they couldn't get it because it was expensive back then, they so they want to rebuy it today. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and Girl Talk was the '90s. I have not seen that, but it's it's. I I don't know what that is. I, I'm I'm kind We're of getting to the age where I was no longer playing board games, and it's like kind of vague to me because I I think it was like Bratz had a version of it, and you would pull a topic card and then you would spin it. And then you it was had like to, that because the old you, one had a spinner. Okay, then you had to move, and whatever you landed on, it would ask you like a question, and it would be like girl talk, and oh. then it would be like, "What was the last color you painted your nails?" Or did you write a love letter in uh, school recently? Mm. If you did, to who? You know, it's funny because when I was doing the research on the '60s, '70s, and '80s and board games, and um, you know, playing cards were a big one in the '60s and '50s because they would play Kanaska, they'd play hearts, they'd play this, pull down the light. You know what I mean? Have the games and stuff like that. Or they would actually play tic-tac-toe and stuff on the girls' skirts. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so when I was looking at the different games, they were all, all of the top games from the 60s, 70s, and 80s were all directed towards either girls or families, but not guys. I just, because I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, if I've ever even had, like, a guy friend say, like, let's pull out a board game. Um, I, well, today more so than back then. Sure. Um, but secretly, we all liked the board games. So if you made one that we actually liked, and, and you know, like the shows, um, uh, some of the, the shows from the 80s, uh, like, or even the 70s, like uh, Kojak. Okay. Or, um, like, uh, he sucked out. That was Kojak. Uh, uh, Chips. Chips. The police officers, Chips. Um it was a TV show. They did a remake of the movie. Okay. They did a movie for it, um, which you probably have seen. Or Chips. Look it up. Okay. It's, they're, on look motorcycle. it up. they're on motorcycles. <laughs> they're on motorcycles. They had board games for those. And the guys would play those. Uh, but they weren't as advertised. Because I feel like they did the advertising themselves. The real true people who like Chips likes chips and if they dropped a board game they'd be on it or mom would say oh he watches chips and buy the chips chips for it, the kid. exactly because i'm i mean like even though like i'm sitting here looking at the games like i think a, um a dude would get frustrated at classic concentration well they could <laughs> um but i feel like anybody would yeah. This is one the ungame. I'm going to show you guys some games. I'm obsessed with this one. The ungame was popular in the um, 70s and 80s. It was big. It was hugely popular because um, it was supposed to be the game of life type. Um, you know, speak out and touch someone didn't last long. And honestly, I'm so glad you brought this one up because what you just said is very important because this game kind of broke that. Yeah. It because did. it says. This game is appropriate, and I like yeah. that they word use that wordage because it says friends, families, parties, classes, churches, group counseling, mm -hmm. kids, teens, singles, There are couples. several different versions of this game. Really? This is the Christian version of this game. Okay. Okay. There was a standard version of this game, and then there was other versions of this game. Okay. So depending on the type of version that you get would depend on what the game puts in. So you know how you have cards of humanity mm -hmm. that are dirty? <gasps> yes. Cards of humanity that are not. Okay. And then 
family like cards or NSFW. Yeah. Okay, got okay. you. Okay, so this what Ungame would do because it was a game that would teach you the morals that you want. Okay. So you've got this. This one is um, a the Christian version. So it's tamed down. How did I not see that this <laughs> whole time? Okay, yeah, they have pocket family version. Yeah. Pocket kids version. Pocket all age version. Yeah. Pocket couples version. Pocket couples version is not going to be a Christian. Submitted by marriage counselors, psychologists, yeah. and couples. This is lit. Look at it. Even has like sample questions on yep. here. Describe your marriage in one word. Yeah. The pocket family version says like name something you enjoy doing with your family. Mm -hmm. The kids one says when Tina moved away, Bill, Bill realized how much he loved her. Tell someone how much you love them. This is this is a good game for traveling. And that's why they're calling it pocket version because these are the ones that you take in the car. Yeah, and honestly, I this has such a, a positive impact on it because this one says like all age version. So it says, what would you like to receive on your next birthday? Like these, this is a legitimate game. And oh I, yeah, I like and all different reason. versions of that game. Yeah, that's so cool. It says over a million sold too. I know, isn't that cool? Then you go back and you remember us talking about TV. There's Terry Tunes, which is Mighty Mouse. Yeah, he's cool. So this is the board game on Mighty Mouse, right? And what's cool about these really old board games is take a look at that graphics. Look at the graphics. Look at him. Yeah, he's it's cool. It's fantastic. The pop bang. This is something you frame and put on the wall. Yeah, literally. You know what I mean? Because it has generic card. It has generic um, pieces. pieces. And then all of these little things you could put around or put them on each of them. Get like a shadow box right? and like glue those pieces to the board if you don't want to play it's it. It's very shoots and ladders. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it is basic, but this game is, um, uh, dates on these games are hard to find. It was $2, so it has to it be. It was $2 back then, yep. So there's that one. And then I have Uncle Wiggly, <laughs> which is a good game. And Uncle Wiggly, uh, a Parker Brothers Child's Classic, so it's off the book. Okay. Yeah. What were you going to say? Um, who, made, who was the second group that made the Ouija boards? Because it was Parker. Group? We I have a oh, Parker's Parker, Brothers one. There's and a then... Parker's brother, and probably Ideal does them. Okay. Yep. So look again. It's very oh shoots and lighter. Yeah. Look but... at the ombre in the back. Yeah. That's ahead of its time. It is. Um. And they probably didn't even realize they did it. It was probably just a mashing of colors. Colors. Yeah. Like unintentional. But it's great. So if you have um. If you collect literary for your kids, look at that little tiny something like this is perfect. <laughs> you know. This just the the graphics alone. Yeah, for sure is so cute, Uncle Wiggly. Candyland is one of my favorite games, Debbie. Candyland, I love it. There's a <laughs> horror film coming out called Candyland. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. So here we have Concentration, which was another game show, and it's almost similar to. Um, it says match prizes and reveal parts of the puzzle. Be the first to solve the puzzle. So as you answer questions, parts of the puzzle are shown. Once you get to the once you can identify the puzzle, so it's almost Wheel of Fortune in a way. Okay, yeah. So that's, isn't that pretty cool? This one looks hard, honestly. It looks like I'll yeah. get mad. <laughs> so then, and then back when TV was came in, you could do TV bingo. Which, which I was really stunned by that You play based off the bingo show. Isn't that cool? So you had to wait till it came out. A totally new concept using the home television with the familiar and classic game. Players call out images on the television, screens that match their bingo cards. So I'm going to go quick here because I want to show you a couple of these. The California Raisins. Nice. This is an advertisement. The California Raisins started as an advertisement for raisins and became huge. And they made board games and TV and everything off it. So board games. And those <laughs> who collect California Raisins, you must, must, must get this. Because check out that board. Oh my god! Check out that board. It's like a realistic image of California raisins. Isn't that fantastic? Love that. And then, so we have California raisins, and then <laughs> the, great the Great Escape. Escape. This we were talking about this, the ancient African strategy game Mandinka. I have no idea. How and to play that. I looked it up for a good fifteen minutes today and cannot find anything. I'm sorry, it. but you could use this as an hors d'oeuvre tray. One hundred percent, you an could. An hors d'oeuvre tray, right? You, you can use but it as a charcuterie board too. You, a charcuterie board. That sounds like the word came from uh, from um, Africa. Charcuterie <laughs> board. But um, I know what that is. And then, of course, the cat Marks. Marks did a ton of stuff. Love Check this that one. Out. Look at that. It's Hungry Hungry Hippo in cat formation. Like, come on. It's so much cooler now that it's cats. It's fantastic. You got to love it. We got a viewer right now called Loser Cat Lady. I know she's going to love this. <laughs> 
I love it. So, anyways, when it is this cold outside, look at this super spy game for those. Look at the graphics on that. You know what? Look. Oh. Oh my gosh. That thing's lit. So it's not even a board. It's a house. House. It's a house. There's a security alarm there. That's amazing. Isn't that hilarious? I love it. So there, and this is just doesn't even touch the... Did you notice that this has the same concept as the operation? Oh, it sure does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this doesn't even touch the tip of our board game. We have a plethora of board games. Literally. It, I mean, tons of them. So when it is super cold outside like this, come in and get some board games and sit your, your family down and say, let's... Let's play a game. You can make a nice charcuterie board, make some hot chocolate, or maybe some tea and something warm. You can make a beautiful charcuterie board. Out of this Mantika set. Mandinka. Mandinka. Set. <laughs> um, but it's because you're supposed to use, um, actually, beads. yeah, the little be beads, beads that are in there. And so I got I don't know how to play it, so I'd have to read it. And I'll look. These are storage, so these don't even count. Okay, so that's for another one. We'll play. Yeah, that looks very hard. So anyways, I know we're running out of time, so I want to thank you guys all and go ahead and do your spiel. Thank you so much for joining us on this time's Time Warp Tuesday. We had a blast talking about some board games, and I know Michigan's weather is going to be brutal for us for the next couple of days. So this would be perfect for you to come on down and grab a couple of board games for you and yourself and your family. We also have a bunch of single-player games as well, mm -hmm. if playing with other people just really isn't your thing. Mm -hmm. But we're still active on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and this will be up tomorrow on YouTube. Threads is something that we're kind of making a, a soon-to-be priority just because it's getting popular. And easy to post on now. And Exactly. TikTok is still a little bit in the works, but if you could shoot over there and give us a follow, maybe soon we can go live on there. When are they going to make a board game on TikTok? When are they going to lower the, the limit for TikTok? I feel like that's just a little much to be able to go live, it's right? Crazy. What is it, 1,000, 5,000? This has to go on super board, 1,000. 1,000? Yeah. But if Anyways. Guys, if you have any of your favorite board games that maybe we didn't talk about today, or maybe we did talk about them, comment down below. Put on I'm your like favorite game hat. I'm literally begging you. To With, let me know what your favorite game is. This reminds me of, this keep, makes me think of, what's her name from Hee Haw? Hee Haw? Yeah, with the tag on her hat. What's Hee Haw? He, what's Hee Haw? Is that a show? Can somebody tell her what Hee Haw is? Please? I guess I'm going to go figure out what Hee Haw is, guys. Bye! Bye! <laughs>